Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Pomeranz. I'm Deputy Director of the Kennan Institute, and I'm pleased to welcome all of you to today's event. Uh, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the Wilson Center's president, Jane Harmon, who regrets that she cannot attend this event, and on behalf of the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council, who is our co-sponsor for today's event. And we are very pleased today to host the first screening of the film Breaking Point, The War for Democracy in Ukraine, produced by three-time Academy Award winner Mark Jonathan Harris. The subject of Ukraine and the recent developments and the developments of the last two years has been discussed at great lengths here at the Cannon Institute and at the Wilson Center. And we have made sure to do so from a variety of perspectives. Um, we have discussed its political and economic impact on Ukraine. We have analyzed the war with Russia, the creation of millions dis of displaced people in Ukraine, Ukraine's ongoing efforts to introduce reform, and so on. This film that you're about to see today addresses the broad geopolitical issues, but it also adds a unique personal dimension to the struggle, as well as provides remarkable footage of events as they happened in real time. Uh, there's several people I want to thank before we begin today's showing. Uh, I want to thank Peter Borisow, the producer of the film, and former ambassador to Ukraine, William Miller, for bringing this unique opportunity to the Wilson Center and the Kennan Institute. I also want to thank Morgan Williams, the president of the U.S.-Ukraine Business Council, for co-sponsoring today's event. Finally, I want to thank John Tyler and Madison Brady from the Wilson Center for all their work in organizing today's uh, showing. There are also several dignitaries in the room who have just arrived, who are very, we are very pleased to join us. Uh, I want to welcome the current Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, of Valery Chali, to the Wilson Center. Uh, ambassador Chali was here. I, 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 I like to think this is becoming a regular occurrence, and, and the ambassador was here just about two weeks ago uh, to uh, open our exhibit uh, by the artist Viktor Sidorenko uh, on the memory of unconsciousness, and we are pleased that you're back so soon to the Wilson Center. Uh, I also encourage everyone who has not had an opportunity to see the exhibit, which is on our ground floor, to do so if you get the chance. And it is also my great pleasure to welcome the former Prime Minister to Ukraine, uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, here. It is a great honor. It, it, it is a great honor to have you in attendance for the premiere of this film in which I should add you have a strong supporting role as well. Uh, and thank you for spending and taking the time to come to the Wilson Center today. I think the list of dignitaries here today is testimony to the excellent and compelling documentary that you are about to watch. And before we begin, I'm gonna invite Peter Borso to the stage, uh, and he's gonna say a few words about the film. Peter. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for that, and Will, for that kind introduction. Um, and our honor of guests, most welcome to, to this uh, uh, screening. Uh, the one point I'd, I'd like to comment on is, is the question of why we made this picture in the first place. Um, a lot of people were in Ukraine when many of these events happened, and a lot of people saw many of the uh, uh, events go by. They lived through them. They saw the uh, casualties. They saw the drama of it all. And many of us were there. I was there for a good, a good portion of it, and many of my uh, friends were. And when we watched uh, the media coverage, when we watched people outside of Ukraine discuss what was going on in Ukraine at the time, there was always a gap. It was never really clear uh, how one event led to the other, the sequence of that story of why Ukrainians chose that particular time to rise in this fashion and the consequences of, of, of that uh, uprising. Uh, it just wasn't clear. It was muddled. The stories were either incomplete or, or some of them were partly false, and there was no clarity to it. So we decided to make a documentary that would be uh, that would objectively distill these events and get to the core of, of the spirit that created the events and the consequences of these events. And we were very, very fortunate uh, to get uh, Mark Harris, 
who's, who's sitting in the here and he'll be speaking with you after the screening, uh, to direct this uh, picture uh, for us. And, and with the help and support of, of uh, Paul Volansky, the screenwriter, um, he really distilled the essence of what was happening. So you, you can see from the origins to the consequences of what happened and why in very uh, human terms. And um, I, I hope you uh, enjoy watching it and appreciate it. Thank you. I, I th I'm Thanks. Thanks very much. And I'm just going to turn it over to Mark Jonathan Harris, the director, uh, three-time Academy Award winner, to talk about the, the documentary that we've, you've just seen. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. This is the first screening to a large audience, so we're interested in getting your feedback afterwards at the, the reception, and perhaps you have some questions. Uh, this is a film, as you can tell from the credits, that a lot of people contributed to, uh, and I wanted to acknowledge some of them are here. Paul Walensky, who is my co-writer and co-producer. <laughs> And without Paul, who speaks fluent Ukrainian, this, pro this project would be in real difficulty because I don't speak Ukrainian. So, uh, but Paul and I worked on this together. We also have uh, Tom Kaufman, who shot part of the film, Tom. Uh, Robert Silverthorne, who uh, also did, uh, Robert, is he still here, who did some of the sound? Uh, maybe he had to leave. Uh, uh, and I, I also want, I mean, you can see this film has been shot by dozens of, uh, at least a dozen cameramen, people who risk their lives. And I, I want to acknowledge my uh, uh, co-director who's in Ukraine, Ola Sanyan, without whom this film couldn't be done. Uh, this is really an, an international co-production between the United States and Ukraine. Uh, and it, it re reflects sort of the global world we live in. Our assistant editor is Chinese. Uh, who actually picked up much more Ukrainian by the end of the film than I did, uh, uh, and whose connection to the film was that her parents uh, suffered during the Cultural Revolution and, she, and, and she, the Tiananmen Square. So uh, uh, I'll just say just a few words why I was drawn to this subject. I came of political age in the 60s, uh, the civil rights struggle, the uh, uh, anti-Vietnam protests. Uh, the first significant film that I did was called Welga. It was about the grape strike. And I saw there how collective action can transform people's lives and what it means to, for people to be involved in a quest for social justice, for equity, and involved in a collective action. And so I was really drawn to this subject for the same reason. Uh, it's called the, the Maidan of Dignity for a Reason. And you can see we were interested, Paul and I, in making this film to see it through the eyes of people whose lives have been transformed by their experience on the Maidan and in the war. And this is really, you can see this is a people's war. People go to war. We were all struck. People go to war in their cars and in school buses, not in, you know, not in tanks, uh, uh, not in armored vehicles to begin with. And we were really struck by uh, the, what Dr. Stabluk says in the film, the spirit of the army, uh, the, the spirit of the people who, who gathered together to try to fight off Russia and to reaffirm the identity of Ukraine as an independent nation. And we also had seen many films and films and a reportage of uh, the events in Ukraine, and it was very important for us to try to bring some historical, political context and perspective to these events, because we didn't think from what we had seen that people in, in, uh, here in the United States and also in Europe really understood the significance of what was happening in, in, because they didn't have a, uh, a historical or political perspective on it. So that was, that was what we tried to do, and 
uh, be interested in your response. Thanks very much, Mark. Um, before we throw it open to questions, and we won't have much time, I do want to invite former Prime Minister Arsen Yatsenuk to say a few words, if he would like. And um, it's our great pleasure. Distinguished audience, uh, Peter, Honorable Mr. Harris, it's a great pleasure and great honor to participate in this screening. I was thinking, what can I say? Frankly, I have nothing to add. This is the piece of truth. This is a terrific piece of documentary about Ukrainian nation, about Ukrainian people, how we are fighting for our independence for our own land and for our future. You know, what's on my mind, it seems to me that this is the perfect time to show this terrific piece of documentary art to our European friends, to the European nations, mainly after the Brexit. That's how we are fighting for the real values, for the freedom and for the democracy. That's how we defend Europe. We sacrifice too much. And Ukrainian people and Ukrainian nation and my country deserves a better future. And it's so important. <laughs> and it's so important for all of us just to realize that we can be successful, that we can really present a successful case story only in case if we are all united. And let me once again praise uh, Mr. Harris for his just great job. Uh, that's, that's an impressive. And uh, I do believe that this documentary will grasp a worldwide audience because this is once again it's all about the truth and truth has the biggest value thank you thank you very much uh we're going to open up to questions immediately from the floor so i see one hand right here I thought it was a wonderful film that really gets truths across that we Americans have not heard nearly enough. The one question I have is there were a good number of EU flags shown in the film, but not a single a single NATO flag. So uh, is it um, any, it, uh, if Ukraine is to get and maintain its independence, can it do so outside of NATO or would joining NATO hurt Putin's feelings? <laughs> I think that's a question I think better that you might ask better than, answer better than I can. Uh, really, I think you're in the I think you're in a be, you're in a better position to answer. You are in the front row, unfortunately, so you can do <laughs> better than I, I can. We'll get you a microphone here. U Ukrainian nation has a number of aspirations and vocations. The first one is that we believe that the time will come and Ukraine will become an uh, EU member, UA instead of UK, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that you can't have the secure Europe and strong Europe without strong NATO. Frankly speaking, we do understand that not everyone in NATO, not in NATO, among NATO member states, are ready to provide a membership for the Ukraine at this particular juncture. The thing is that we need to make Ukrainian military durable and approximate it to the NATO standards. God knows how it's going to take to join NATO. But what I am I sure about, this time will come and we will strengthen both the European Union and NATO. More than 50% of Ukrainian people support NATO membership perspective. It never happened before. So we are united in both our EU aspirations and NATO membership aspirations. <laughs> M 
maybe you could just I discuss a little bit how you identified the stories that so dominate this film. Um, we, uh, it was important for us to look for uh, a diversity of characters. And uh, so we, uh, I, uh, Paul and I identified uh, certain characters, some we had read about, Tatiana, and uh, also Ola Sanyan, uh, our director, has a very close relationship with her. Uh, we were looking for someone like Bohemia at the beginning, the soldier, someone who had be <coughs> who had started on the Maidan and then decided to, to, to join uh, uh, the, the armed forces. Uh, we also looked for somebody who was Jewish. It was important because uh, so much of the so Soviet propaganda, the Russian propaganda, was that this was a CIA conspiracy abetted by Jews. And there's also, in the United States, there's a, a you know, uh, lingering image that Ukrainians are anti-Semitic. And so we thought it was important to have somebody in the film who is Jewish. Um, and we also, we, a com combination of, we look for certain types and then, you know, we were, we were edited the film here in the United States. We didn't shoot there, but w in conversation with Olis, we would, to try to find people. And casting in documentaries is just as essential as casting in feature films, and maybe even more so. And so we interviewed other people too, and finally there are people who are on the cutting room floor here. I mean, there's a huge amount of footage uh, for various reasons. Uh, uh, so then we finally put together this mix that seems to represent the, uh, or it's an approximation of the diversity. Uh, and we were very interested in the Yanchenko's husband and wife. Uh, and, you know, it's, the process of editing is you take a lot of material and you try to compress it and refine it and distill it. And we're, we're uh, in that process, we're looking at it f for an, a Western audience and in consultation with the people in Ukraine, I mean, who were very close to this. So we would necessarily compress and simplify, and they would say, wait a minute, that's too simplistic. That's not, you know, you're, you're missing nuances. And so it was a constant dialogue. On the other hand, at the beginning, they wanted everything in the film mm -hmm. uh, because they had lived through it. So every moment was important to them. So we had a, an outside perspective and it was a collaboration between those two points of view. Right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get a microphone to you. I, uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, what are the, uh, uh, who, who do you see as a market for this? Is this going to be commercially released film? Yes, we, well, we hope so. This is the first preview. We'd like to see it uh, certainly uh, shown here on television. and. You know, I think probably a very limited theatrical release, but uh, television and certainly, yeah, w we think it's very important that the film be seen in France and in Germany, uh, per per particularly. Um, w the normal route, you go to film festivals, you attract attention, then w we will see whether we can market it. But we've basically really just finished it. We're still working a little bit on the color correction sound. Uh, so, uh, we hope for a wide audience, but it is aimed at the West and in Europe. And I think it's, it's as relevant now as it, as it was uh, a year ago. And you know, when we looked at the film yesterday uh, or the other day after Brexit, when that was in mind, when we hear Andre Kirchhoff talking about Britain being a model, you know, you suddenly, yeah. you know, it. Uh, Role models uh, change, I guess. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, that suddenly seems ironic, <laughs> yeah, not, uh, uh, but you hope for as wide an audience as possible. We, we will see. Right here. Uh, thank you. I thought the film was wonderful, and, it, and some of the speakers described it as the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, the tough stuff begins with the rule of law, dealing with corruption. Uh, a few days ago, the Wilson Center um, hosted um, a presentation by Luis Rubio with respect to Mexico mm -hmm. and the rule of law dealing with c 
corruption there were viewed as fundamental to the long-term development of that society. My, my, my comment is, is almost, the, the film almost asks for a second film, what happens next? Well, it's a, a, yes. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, I think uh, Timothy Snyder in the film says, you know, it, that the, it, the revolution is the easy part, the hard part. And uh, I think, you know, the former prime minister talks about how, you know, that you have to move from revolution to evolution. It doesn't take months or, uh, or years. It takes, you know, decades. And look, we're still fighting some of that battle here in the United States, a battle against not necessarily corruption, but political influence by the wealthy. This, this is a problem for our democracy uh, as well. I don't know w what the answer is. I know it's a very difficult fight, and you, I'm sure you have a much greater perspective on this than I do. Yes. Uh, I, sh I should add that tomorrow is Constitution Day, I believe, or is it Thursday? To yes. So, so exact 25th anniversary of the Ukrainian Constitution. And this is something that I actually deal with all the time in terms of trying to understand rule of law and how you evolve into rule of law. And we've seen some very important constitutional amendments that have been made to begin the process of creating a more independent judiciary. We've seen major reforms of the police in Ukraine. Um, but all these reforms will take time in order to build the institutions that you need in order to have the rule of law, to anticipate that they appear miraculously after 25 years of post-Soviet rule, after centuries of misrule in the Soviet and Russian Empire. It's, it's something that has to take time, and it's the patience that one needs in order to build these institutions and the political will as well to make sure that they remain independent. But what, from an outsider's perspective, what is encouraging is, is some of the people in our film who were uh, intimately involved in the Maidan are now part of the government. And they too, I mean, at the end, you know, uh, they're talking about the, the, the different, it's a different perspective when you're outside criticizing than when you're inside trying to change it. And uh, they too have to shift their perspective. Uh, it's one thing, and I think we're, we're trying to suggest that in the film, it's from fighting against to fighting for something. And that becomes quite difficult. Uh, uh, you know, from my perspective here, you know, the film is also an inspiration about how people can act collectively when they get together. Uh, and uh, what, what's, what happened in the Maidan is, I think, an inspiration to uh, all of us who want to bring about social change in this country as well. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's seen that way. I think we're going to bring our conversation. We, we've, we've already run over time, and we have a reception to follow here. So I'm going to invite, at this point, everyone to attend our reception. But before we do, I want to again thank the producer, Peter Borso, the writer, our director, our dignitaries who have come to talk about today's event, and thank you so much for attending.